everybody, we've got a great drag race video for you today because we have two iconic GM performance cars that both can be had for under $10,000, the Chevrolet C4 Corvette and the F-Body Pontiac Trans Am. And in this video, we're gonna find out which one is best. In case, how are we gonna do that? To test these cars, we are going to do our typical TFL Classics combination of a quarter mile drag race a rolling race, a braking test between these two cars, but we also need to compare them to a benchmark, something modern, and that is going to be this turbocharged CX-30. All right, my dude, so tell me a little bit about that Corvette. What year is it? What engine does it have? Well, it's pretty much the best Corvette they've ever made. It's a 1988 C4 Corvette with an L98 V8, 245 rockin' horsepower, 340 even more rockin' torques. What about you? This is a 1995 Pontiac Trans Am Comp TA, one of just over 160 made under the hood. Through that Ram Air hood is a 5.7 liter small block Chevy, the LT1. It makes 310 horsepower, but uh, you definitely have the weight advantage on me. Um, and of course, we are up here at a mile above sea level. So for those of you expecting perfect quarter mile times, you're not going to see it in this video because this is real world conditions. Uh, but Case, let's, let's hear what that Corvette sounds like. <laughs> So dude, I have to say, I think your, uh, your Corvette won the rev battle. I mean, they're both V8s, both big 5.7, so it's kind of hard to go wrong with either. What do you say? Should we, uh, should we give a quarter mile a chance here? Let's do it. Oh, oh big burnout. Come on, Micah, control it. Good. Not a terrible launch. He's definitely ahead, though. Staying ahead so far. Still kind of pulled ahead. Oh, I, I'm gonna win it. That's pretty good. I'm actually in a full tank of fuel right now, too. <laughs> hey, you took me on that one. How'd you do in the quarter? 16 at 91. I did a 16.07 at 91.6 miles per hour, and I just topped off my fuel tank, but even with all that fuel in the car, I think that's around about the best time I've set. Impressive time. I ran a 16.7 at uh, 90 miles an hour, um, you know, which is uh, pretty pretty poor. At least that's what the Trans Am folks are going to remind me, but at a mile above sea level and with these older tires, uh, the grip thing is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So. I'm curious, let's do a test now where the grip doesn't matter. We're going to do a rolling race from 30 and we'll see how the, uh, these two compare. So you said a 16.7, so that's over half a second behind. Yeah, yeah, wait for the rolling race. That's pretty good. <laughs> Keith is not going to be laughing for much longer. He's about to experience the OptiSpark 5.7 liter LT1. Now this is a T-top equipped car, a standard coupe, would be a little bit lighter. Uh, and we do have a fantastic first manual transmission in this Comp TA. Hey, congrats on that win. I mean, very honorable win, I think, in the C4 Corvette. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the values on these cars because they weigh, or they range hugely. So a late Trans Am, you know, post facelift, late 90s, early 2000s, an LS1 car with a WS6 package is going to run you 15, 20, 25 thousand dollars now. These early Trans Ams are uh, much more affordable. So this car has 107 thousand miles on it. It's a 95, and we picked it up for 6,600 bucks. Yeah, and 6,600 bucks is a hell of a deal for that car. I got my car, this Corvette, for around 10 grand. And uh, similar to this, some of the more special models of it, like the ZR1 or the Grand Sport, can get up close to around $30,000. So it depends on how much you want to spend, but even at the lower end of that spectrum, like this car, it's a lot of fun to be had for not that much money. All right, so now we're gonna do a roll race from 30 miles an hour. Um, you know, plant, the, uh, plant that peg on that speedometer at 30. Pick a gear, any gear. I have six of them. You really have four. And then we'll see what happens. Okay, come on, Trans Am. Let's see what this LT1's got. Second gear. All right, three, two, one. 
go. Full throttle. Oh, it is neck and neck and it shifted just over 5,000. There's no point in waiting till red line. He's pulling away though. He's pulling away. I'm pulling away from him a little bit. They're neck and neck though. And I get to stay in my gears longer because it's a four speed. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, the lightness of the Corvette definitely beat me on that one. Oh, that was a good race, dude. But uh, yeah, man, that lightness of that car, I think really came into play. You know, I think the things that are killing me are probably a little lack of maintenance and my weight. All right, Case, well, uh, this might be my redemption round. Probably not, but let's do a 60 to zero mile per hour braking test in these two cars. We both have ABS. My car is going on seven years newer than yours though. Yeah, that's true, but I think the only one of these I can remember losing was against another C4 Corvette. So, excuse me if I'm a little confident. The funniest thing about this is that this car, um, the Comptier was uh, designed by the head of SLP to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the BF Goodrich Comptier tire, um, but this one is running like a Bridgestones on it. So, uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, let's do this. We'll accelerate up to 60, we'll hit the brakes at the cone. Come on, Trans Am. You got this, buddy. There's 40, 50, and 60 there. All right, got 60. We're just gonna slam on the brakes at the cone, which is now. Oh, good brakes out of the Trans Am. Look at that. He beat me, but not by that much. <laughs> All right. Still a loss, but not bad. There's so much car in front of the wheel that we <laughs> measure to. That's true. Yeah, the wheel is at 112 feet. Okay. But. So, that, I mean, that's pretty typical. We've seen numbers round about like that. Pretty good for a lot a, of different cars. And yeah. I know this car has had some brake work in the past, but still like for a 20. Yeah. You know, on almost older a 30 year old too. car. Yeah. But look at that. So 112 feet, but the front end of the car <laughs> is really at 115, 116 feet. Look at the overhang on the yeah, trans. I feel like that ought to factor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do your car. What are we looking at here? 106. Okay, yeah. So Jesus. right in the ballpark of, of what I've done with this car, I'd say pretty consistently. This car stops so well. We need to do like <laughs> its own video just around the brakes because yeah. just about any new car is not going to stop as well either. Yeah, it's impressive how well it does brake. You wouldn't expect that from an 80s GM anything, but uh, no. it does it. Absolutely not. All right, so Case, you won this one. Congratulations. But now we're going to see how your mighty Corvette stacks up against a modern day family car. Yeah, and that Mazda doesn't look like much, but it's quick. So this one I'm actually a little, a little concerned about. Well, let's talk about it. All right, Brendan, tell me a little bit about that modern CX-30 that's on the Classics channel. Yeah, so I'm just driving your typical mom spec 2023 Mazda CX-30 with the uh, 2.5 liter turbo engine in it. Okay, so tell the class, what are you making for horsepower and torque then? This thing makes 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, that turbocharging. 320 pound-feet of torque especially doesn't sound very mom spec to me. And that turbo at altitude here is going to make a big difference. On paper, at 245 horsepower, 340 pound-feet of torque from this car, we're not that different. But yeah, the, not only is that car modern, the turbo is going to make a big difference. So let's see how they do. You're also all wheel drive. Well, I'm also, the, the car weighs about, I think, 300 pounds more than yours. So I am at a little bit of a weight disadvantage. Oh, that was, a, well, neither of us launch very well, <laughs> is what I'll say. But he's sticking right there with me. Oh man, he's actually beating me! Oh no, I'm gaining on him though! Oh, that was close! Oh man, I decided to uh, do my best mom impression and be a little ginger with the accelerometer, but I think that hurt me. I kind of want to race you again and give it a, a full-fledged effort this time. Yeah, I'm up for that. I also didn't launch well, but at least this car's light, so once I did get moving, it took off pretty quickly. What did your uh, Solo DL say for time? 
So it says that I did a 16.06 at 92 miles an hour. First run was 16.07 at 91.6. So almost exactly the same. So really, I think that this is just gonna come down to who gets the better launch. Yeah, and I think, I think this Mazda deserves a proper launch. So let's try it one more time if you're up for it, where I give it a little bit of rev and then let off the brake pedal give this a proper launch. Part of me wants to take my win, but yeah, let's do it. Let's give that Mazda a fair shake. All right, Case, I have sport mode engaged, the air conditioning turned off, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of revs while holding the brake pedal with my left foot and drop this thing to see if it can actually beat that Corvette. Yeah, we'll see if uh, both of us could not drop the ball when we drop the, well, <laughs> when I drop the clutch and we drop the brake. <laughs> Oh, it just died! What the heck? Oh man, stupid traction control! Let me down! That Mazda really seems to struggle with the launch, and it's probably just because it's heavy. And the Corvette stays ahead. So I actually managed that one at a 15.98. Yeah, and I did a 1703 at 88 miles an hour. So the uh, the nannies kicked in and said, no, no, do not race this thing. Granted, you know, that car's not really built for doing drag races, but still pretty impressive how quick it is. So big kudos to Brendan in the Mazda for doing his hardest to keep up with the Corvette. And it was pretty close there in the first race, but gotta say that Corvette really held its own. It definitely beat the uh, Trans Am out here today and it has independent rear suspension. So it really is gonna handle a lot better than this car too. What do you think, Case? I think that the Corvette is worth the extra bit of money that it costs compared to the Trans Am for me. I mean, there's definitely a buyer out there for the Trans Am. It's got four seats, it's got a little bit more space. So if you want something that's a little bit more practical, you could make an argument for this. But for me, wanting just a fun kind of sports car that I can still more or less daily, I like the Corvette. You know the ultimate solution is a car that's not here. It's the later LT equipped Corvettes. Yeah, that's true. In the C4 generation. One of these days, guys, I promise we're gonna get a hold of one of those and put it up against our 80s and 90s muscle collection here. But thank you so much for watching, Case. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, big thank you to Camera Ninja Brendan today. He's doing a good job.